Hi there, Jeff Coughlin, Editor Scale Modelling Now. Welcome to this short inbox browse for the FXD Haviland Heron Mark II. Now, any of you who are a, um, or should I say of a certain age, will remember this kit. It is very old indeed and has been released in the Vintage Classic series by Airfix and I think that's to be hugely applauded. Um, why? Because it gives us a chance to look at some of these old kits and I think come back and revisit them. Um, the kit obviously is quite basic and we'll have a look at that in just a second. But in 70 second scale, um, it's just fun. It's fun. It's not going to break the bank to get hold of and you'll have a chance to build something that, well, the chances are no other manufacturer is going to make. So um, for that reason um, and for others, I, I think it's an absolute... Um, joy uh, frankly that it's returned to the fold as others are too and I know Airfix from what I've heard um, seem to be up for ideas and suggestions so speak to them contact them drop them messages interact with them on social media to put in any requests for some of those old kits that you have seen because there's a, just a chance we might see them again okay 70 second scale um, classic really absolute classic you can imagine um, there's quite a bit of surface detail. Hard to see, I know, um, but in fact, there's quite a lot of raised rivets on the model. Now, that's not a problem. Um, if you check out my full build of the Bristol Super Freighter, where I did a really in-depth video build of that particular project, um, we stumbled across a, a, me a method of just working the surface gently through sanding um, that reduces, <coughs> excuse me, reduces the effect of the uh, raised rivets and actually makes them look really realistic. Um, so that's uh, actually no problem at all. It's quick, easy, and does a good job. Um, the moulds actually don't look too bad. Sure, there's some flash you'd expect it. Gosh, I mean, the moulds are absolutely um, decades old, but nonetheless, um, the, the model is, is good, you can see it's a good size. Um, it's probably about, I don't know, um, nine or 10 inches and, uh, long, something like that, whatever the equivalent in centimeters is. Um, and in fact, you've got a few options too. You've got some nice little touches like the external steps. You've actually got some some people, this is a young lad here, this is chat with an extraordinary looking uh, uh, hat. I'm quite sure what sort of hat that is, but hey ho. Um, should you want to add um, figures, um, You've got uh, adjustable um, control surfaces, um, so we can have um, a look at those. They were the, at a time when the art whole idea was you could actually move them and play with them, but that's not, not what we'll be doing here, of course. Um, but we'll be able to, to look at those uh, as we go with the build, because this is gonna get a build, it's gonna be a full build in SMN. I'm gonna do it because I remember building this first time round uh, 40 odd years ago, when it's a chance to have another look now. Um, so here we go with the main wings, much the same. Um, obviously you wouldn't expect any detail, there isn't really any detail um, to speak of in those. A couple of crew figures, yet more cabin crew uh, and others over here, another chat with his funny hat. Um, separate wheels, uh, which aren't too bad, um, a bit basic, but hey ho. Um, classic nose wheel with, with integral uh, wheel and tyre. Um, the prop blades actually don't look too bad. They're, they're not. They're not brilliant. They're probably one of the weakest parts of the kit. But with care, we might be able to work those. Uh, you do get the option, as you see here, for an open. Well, you could pose it open. It's a rear crew door, and inside you've got quite a decent detailed bulkhead. So actually, that's um, a nice little touch. The clear parts actually don't look too bad. Um, that would be pleasing really. In fact, even for the for the, for the the time, that was quite an innovative design. If you can see here, you've got um, the windscreen molded as part of the forward upper fuselage. So there's a chance to get a good fit there, get some masking going, and um, we should be able to lose uh, any joins there. Um, so we haven't got the problem of a separate fitting um, windscreen, which uh, was always a problem with some of the other um, airliners in World War 44, things like the Vanguard, as I recall, and some others. Um, but really, that, that's that's about it in terms of the kit parts. Not too bad. Coming round, let's have a look at the instruction book. It? Well, it's an instruction sheet, really. Very classic. I'm sure this is just the original sheet. Um, if it isn't, then it doesn't do or offer much more than the original did. Very, very simple, as you can imagine. So for me, this is going to be all about 
nice cleaning up, really good uh, care with the prep of all the joins, things like that. Taking care of those external rivets and just, just reducing them slightly. And then a really good paint job. And then I'm sure you'll be able to uh, end up with a really nice, uh, nice project at the end of it. Decent um, decals this. Love the fact that Jersey Airlines has been picked for, for the decals. As you can see here, if we just come back to the box, I mean, what's not to like uh, again about that? Lovely sort of, um, looks like it's basically silver on, on, on most of the airframe. And then we've got uh, the white spine and that nice blue sort of uh, nose section here. Love it, absolutely great, great scheme. Um, and then you get a nice new coloured uh, instruction sh sheet or painting guide, I should say, and decal placement guide uh, over here. So there we go. I mean, that's the kit. Um, I'm just really excited with the fact that it's come out and it's been re-released. As I said, I, I for one absolutely can't wait to, to get into it. So that's not going to be long coming. And um, so keep an eye on the magazine, keep an eye on scalemodelingnow.com uh, and you'll be able to follow the full build in due course.